I have been very pleased and honored to have served as your principal this year. These students and this community represent what is right and good about Kansas athletics and activities. In spite of bumps in the road and the national pandemic, you have not only persevered, you have excelled. I am so proud of you all. Today we want to celebrate your amazing accomplishments and to honor your tremendous commitment and resilience. Thank you all for a job well done. This is Coach Starr to talk about high school football. First off, I'd like to thank all the people who make football a success. I would like to thank all the parents for all that you do with your support and providing meals for the team. I'd like to thank the administrators and athletic directors for all the behind the scenes work that you do. I'd like to thank Hank and his crew for providing video for many to view our games and to stay connected with the program. Thank you to Karen Pekinak for videoing and our trainers and managers for all your hard work and time you provide. I'd like to thank my family for allowing me the time that's committed to the team. And last but not least, Coach Little and his family for his endless hours of preparation and hard work. I'd like to thank the senior class. You guys have dedicated four years to the program. You guys have put in endless hours of work and preparation to making yourselves and the team better. To the juniors, sophomores, and freshmen, I'd like to thank you for all that you have done. You guys have worked hard to get yourselves better and to help make the team better. Keep working as we look for greater success in the future. This year's team finished with a five and four record. We battled, we battled through many adversities. We had some injuries that we overcame and we keep shuffling people in and you guys kept rising to the challenge. Thanks for all that you have done. The members of the football team this year, starting with the freshmen, Kai Schwartz, Ethan Graff, Derek Bishop, Alex Jones, Colton Manis, and Christopher Mitchell. Sophomores, Christian Roth, Caden Faust, Logan Thiel, and Dalton Regan. Juniors, Bryce Frazier, Nathan Roth, Seniors, Bevan Gradig, Martin Lopez, Hunter Mitchell, Seth Hoopengarner, and Kendall Steinert. Our managers and trainers, managers Clayton Schneider and Juan Lopez, trainers Kristen Trapp and Ashton Butler. Some of the awards these guys have received, Logan Thiel, was first team running back, first team kicker, all district. Second team running back, second team kicker, all league. Caden Faust, all district, first team defensive back, an honorable mention offense. All league, second team defensive back, an honorable mention quarterback. Dalton Regan, all district, honorable mention offense, honorable mention defense. All League Honorable Mention Defensive Back. Kendall Steinert, All District, First Team Center, Second Team Defensive Line. All League Second Team Center, Second Team Defensive Line. Bevan Gradig, All District, Second Team Defensive Line, Honorable Mention Offense. All League First Team Defensive Line, Second Team Tight End. And honorable mention defensive line, all state. Hunter Mitchell, all district, honorable mention offensive line, all league, first team offensive line, honorable mention offensive line, all state. Seth Hoopengarner, all district, first team offensive line, second team linebacker, all league, first team linebacker, and second team utility back. All State, honorable mention, linebacker. Thanks again for everyone's dedication and all the support you guys provided for this year's football team. Thank you.
Several things about the 2019-2020 OBHS volleyball season stand out. Some are moments of great pride and some of frustration. The girls placed second at the Healy and Otis Bison Lacrosse tournaments. We had some awesome plays throughout the season. We were one of the few that beat Central Plains who eventually won state. These are just a few of those awesome moments. Our most frustrating moment was the final match against Victoria. I have never seen a game that was more intense and had more ups and downs in my life. The determination, pride, and effort that I saw these girls put into that game was inspirational and filled me with great pride. I realized that the outcome was not what we wanted and cut short our goals. However, it was one of the moments I am most proud of in Otis Bison volleyball history. A majority of that pride was due to the great leadership we had from our seniors, Cora Anderson, Kristen Trapp, Lincoln Frondichek, and Maddie Wilsey. Their work ethic, dependability, motivation, and willingness to do whatever it took to win was a major reason for the success of not only this season, but the last four seasons. They were one of the major reasons we went to state three of their four years. I want to thank you for letting me have the opportunity to coach you. You have accomplished so much this year, not only on the court, but off. Many of you are the leaders of not only your teams, but our clubs and classes. Many of them are presidents of their clubs, such as student council, K's and SAD. We had girls make the all-league teams, the all-state team, place in the top 50 in the state on a particular skill, and we also did exceptional in our academics. Our team accumulated a team average grade point higher than 3.75. To calculate the team average, we had to include all of the players that played in a varsity game, which was most of our team. Several of our members made the all-academic first team, which requires them to maintain a 4.0 GPA. Those girls were Cora Anderson, Lakin Fondrochek, Maddie Wiltsey, Lauren Meyer, and Macy Wiltsey. We also had two members that received an all-academic honorable mention certificate, which requires a grade point average between 3.75 and 3.99. They include Kristen Trapp and Abby Barr. The players that received CPL honors were Maddie Wilty, unanimous first team, Kristen Trapp and Lauren Meyer, honorable mention. We had a girl honored for being in the top 50 of the state across 1A through 6A, ranking 32nd with service aces and 30th in aces per set. Lauren Meyer received those honors. Maddie Wilty also made the second team, all state team. Our seniors were great leaders and will be greatly missed. I am proud of you and all of your accomplishments. The seniors all lettered, and they include Corey Anderson, Lake and Fondercheck, Kristen Trapp, and Maddie Wiltsey. Our juniors who helped lead our team and lettered included Abby Barr, Danica Bartnick, and Lauren Meyer. Our talented group of freshmen included Taylor Alloway, Johanna Ballman, Kyra Ball, Taylor Croissant, Kendall Dalton, Destiny Doyle, Elena McVeigh, Haley Morrison, Chloe Shank, and lettering for the first time is Macy Wiltsey. I wish the seniors the best in everything they set out to do. As for the juniors and freshmen, I look forward to what the next season brings. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Coach Ava here to talk about cross country. After coaching junior high football for 24 years, I decided to give cross country a try. And this is about the only sport that I haven't coached. I did coach girls tennis my first year out of college. And I haven't coached swimming because, well, number one, I haven't been at a school that had swimming. And number two, I can't swim very well. But getting back to cross country, I truly enjoyed this year. I did say that I learned a lot, not only from the other coaches I met at the various meets, and my cousin who coaches cross country at Halstead, but the kids themselves. Although I've coached track for many years, I really hadn't been around the long distance aspect of it, so I had to relearn things like the different training phases throughout the year. I also learned that I'm not young anymore, and that's something I will talk about later. This year we had six kids out for cross country. Sophomores included Tom Barr and Peyton Butler. Juniors included Jace Coles and our three seniors, which included Preston Carlson, Ashton Butler, and Amanda Sizemore. We even had one seventh grader out, Memphis Jensen. This was a good group of kids to work with. I will say that I didn't make it a, a drudgery, but we did run a little. Could we have run more? Sure. 
Could I have pushed them more? Yes. Could we have ran more hills? Absolutely. This was a learning experience for me. We had a good time. It takes a certain kind of kid to want to run. Not everyone enjoys running three to four miles a day. I'm kind of a seasonal runner, so during this coronavirus epidemic, I started pounding the roads again. And sometimes it's hard to get up for, so you got to make it fun. One thing I will say is that I did think that we improved each meet for the most part. Sure, there was a couple where we didn't fare too well, but that happens when you run. Several factors you have to take in consideration include how you're feeling, the course layout, and of course the weather. Some of the courses they ran on were pretty challenging. But getting to the kids. Our sophomores, like I said, included Tom Barr and Peyton Butler. And Tom kept things fun. You could always count on Tom to come up with, a, with an interesting quote. Tom competed hard. He ran his best race at Sterling, just over 21 minutes. Everyone ran well there, although it was freezing cold, and you wanted to get over. You wanted to get it over with. He ran well at regionals, which which is a good sign. I'm looking forward to having Tom next year. Hear that, Tom? Peyton Butler was another sophomore. Like Tom, Peyton's best race was at Sterling. I think he sprinted that one. His second best race was at regionals, where he qualified for state. You could always count on Peyton for a laugh or two. Peyton was, one, Peyton was one that was one of the top finishers in practice. Looking forward to having Peyton next year. Got that, Peyton? Jace Coles was our lone junior. Jace is that quiet competitor. One thing about Jace is that you could always count on him to come in first in our runs in practice. He was a good leader and would lead by example. He PR'd in, you guessed it, Sterling. The second best run was at Smith City, where it was also rather cold. He ran a decent time at regionals. Looking forward to having Jace out next year. Correct, Jace? Our three seniors were Preston Carlson, Ashton Butler, and Amanda Sizemore. I was glad to have these three seniors out. Preston would always keep you informed of what was going on in and around the world. I got more better news from him than I would listening to the radio. And Preston competed hard. He ran just over 20 minutes at Sterling. See the trend here? Sterling. I want all of our meets to be cold. Just kidding. Preston ran well at CPL. Our two girls were Ashton and Amanda. And one thing about these two is that they never gave up. Ashton's best run was at Larned, which next to regionals had some difficult hills. I was proud of the way she attacked them. Ashton would make sure the others were organized. For Amanda, one thing I saw from Amanda is how she would encourage others. I saw that at St. John, where she would not only encourage her own teammates, but other runners as well. And that's what I like about cross country. You encourage other people. She also ran her best at, you guessed it, Sterling. I would like to wish these three seniors the best of luck next year and I really appreciate the work that they put in. Peyton Butler did qualify for state by qualifying in regionals, and that was a great experience not only for him, but for me as well. Walmigo is a very challenging course with many hills. I don't remember it being that hilly when I would go golfing there as a student at K-State. The only thing I remember was slicing a golf ball and hearing the glass break. Peyton finished 28th out of 80 participants. I was extremely pleased of how he finished the last part of the race. I do have a better idea of how to train for state, although there won't be too much of an adjustment as far as the workouts go. Thanks for Tom who came along and for providing the water. We had a good time. Peyton and Tom showed me some good eating places where to get donuts in the morning, and had an excellent ice cream place. I learned that I wasn't young anymore, although I got to share this story. We were, in, we were in academy sports, and the boys were trying the power tower, an upper body workout contraption. My story, not theirs. I could tell that they were struggling on this thing, and I said, get off that thing. Let me show you how it's done. That was a mistake. 
I proceeded to think that I could still lift my body off the ground and lift my legs up. Kind of work the core, you know, and the legs. All of a sudden, I heard and felt a rip in my tricep and my pec. I can't remember what I said, but they probably learned a choice word from me after that happened. Long story short, I called my wife, hoping to get sympathy, but instead, she calls me an idiot. The next morning, I looked like Rocky Balboa after getting knocked out by Apollo Creed in the movie Rocky. Not in my face, but my upper extremity. Boy, that hurt. But still not sure I learned my lesson. Anyway, thanks a bunch. We had a great year, and I'm looking forward to next year. Again, I'd like to wish the seniors the best of luck next year, and we'll miss eating pizzas after meets with you. But I'm looking forward to coaching next year. Thank you, parents, for all the food you supplied throughout the season and given me the opportunity to coach your child. Thanks again. Hello, I'm Curtis Little, and I will be talking about the Otis Bison High School boys basketball team. I'd like to start by saying thank you to the parents for their support during the season and in the summers and for preparing meals for the guys during the season. The guys love the amazing food and enjoy the time they get to break bread together and bond. Thank you to the administration for organizing the events for us to compete in. I'd also like to thank Hank and his TV crew for streaming games for people that cannot make it. People all over Kansas and from many other states get to watch our games because of the hard work that they put in. Thank you to Carly for being such an awesome teammate and supporting me during the season and during summer activities. I'd also like to thank Coach Butler and his family for the time he spends working on basketball. We went 3-18 this season. It was a tough season, but these guys battled every day and improved throughout the season. It is very tough and very rare for a high school team to have zero senior boys participate in basketball, so we had to depend on a lot of younger guys to step up and play a bigger role than they may have expected. I'm so proud of how all of these guys stepped up and competed this year. One of our big highlights of the year was beating Sylvan at home. Sylvan won her sub-state and finished with an 18-7 and record. The guys played really well together and held Sylvan at arm's length to earn a great victory. Another game I'm really proud of is our regional matchup against Natoma. We had many varsity players either sick or injured, but we did have some young guys step up and play really steady for us. This gave us a chance in a really competitive game, but we just didn't have enough. Our 2019-2020 basketball roster included freshmen Ethan Graff, Juan Lopez, Clayton Snyder, and Colton Manneth, sophomores Logan Thiel, Dalton Regan, Christian Roth, Peyton Butler, and Cooper Manneth, and juniors, Ethan Schneider, Jace Coles, Nathan Roth, and Ethan Reaver. Jace was selected third team CPO by the coaches in our league. I'm so proud of this group. We were so competitive this season with no seniors. If these guys continue to work hard over the summer and compete during the fall, then I believe they will have a ton of success in the future. Thank you to the juniors for stepping up early this year and learning to be excellent leaders and examples for our younger guys. They will be awesome senior leaders for us next year. Lastly, once again, I'd like to thank everyone for their support during the season. The future is very bright for this group. The Lady Cougars ended the 2019-2020 basketball season with the school's best record of 21-3, which was previously recorded by the 1976 season record of 20-4. The senior girls have an impressive overall record of 78-19 in their four-year span at Otis Bison, once again setting the school record for the most wins in a four-year span. Starting the season outright, the Lady Cougars won the Fairfield Tournament for the fourth time with all three senior girls making the all-tournament team. The Lady Cougars kept the winning rolling by winning the Hoisington Tournament by a dominant fashion over the Ellenwood Eagles, beating them by 49-16 mark, and finally winning the tournament that had seen the Cougars finish second the last four seasons prior. Once again, the three senior girls making the all-tournament team. This kept the team undefeated with the matchup with the Central Plains Oilers. The Lady Cougars gave the Central Plains all they wanted in the first half and only trailed 20-21 to at halftime before the Oilers made the score worse than the game really was and handing the Cougars their first loss of the season. The Cougars finished the regular season mark with a 19-1 mark and set the Cougars up 
with Central Plains in the regional final. This handed the Cougars their second loss of the season and left the Cougars with a first round matchup with the team that defeated the Cougars last year and kept them from the state tournament. The Cougars knew it would be a tough tournament playing the undefeated Thunder Ridge the first round and the undefeated Golden Plains in the finals. Winning both games, this gave the Lady Cougars a first round matchup with the 23-1 Hanover Wildcats, where the Cougars lost 41 to 36 ending an awesome ceiling season and falling short of playing central plains for the third time individually for the cougars maddie wiltsey ended her career with 1569 points making the all league unanimous first team all state team and first team all state in the hayes wichita topeka capital and who's who's in kansas sports maddie is going to play basketball next year for the carney nebraska lopers Cora made All-League Team, State Tournament, All-Tournament Team, also making the All-State Tournament Teams in several papers. Cora is going to play her college basketball at Barton County Community College for the Cougars. Kristen also made the All-League Team, several All-State Tournament Teams in several of the papers. I would like to thank this group of senior girls for all the hard work and leadership they've shown over the last four seasons. They have done a great job improving from their freshman to their senior year and has really helped our program the last four years. Also helping f for the senior girls, Danica showed she could be a much needed ball handler for us this season. Relieving Kristen at time, bringing the ball up the court. She also did an awesome job on our box and one and triangle and two defenses. Lauren also created havoc for most offenses with her inside and outside shooting. She also created a difficult time for teams to score with her post defense. We had several freshman girls play valuable minutes for us at key times throughout the season, but more important, gave our varsity a good look in practice that we have not been able to do over the last several seasons. Our JV squad ended the season with a 6-6 six and six record, which is a little misleading. Several of the teams we play, due to numbers and other factors, use several varsity players on the JV squad. This is going to be really important that each girl works on her individual skills for next year, especially with the social distancing, to help as several will be playing key minutes for the Cougars. I would really like to thank Mr. Avey and his wealth of knowledge and patience that helps the players sometimes after I get after them to keep them on the right path. I would like to thank my wife who puts up with all the sleepless nights and frustration that goes with coaching. A huge thank, thank to Hank and his Cougar Broadcast crew for filming the games for those who cannot make it to the games. Also Mr. Rice and Mr. Lowry, Megan Yarmer and Dee Bartnick. I would really like to thank all the parents who have helped with all the team meals and getting the girls to all the practices and activities throughout the year. And a huge success to Mr. Star and a huge thanks to Mr. Starr with the weights and conditioning he does for the ladies. Last of all, I'd like to thank the fans. It has been an awesome ride here at Otis Bison, and I'm sorry to say that this is my last season coaching at Otis, and I wish the Cougars the best of luck in the future and be willing to help with any way that I can go Cougars. Hello, Kelsey Monahan to talk to you about high school cheerleading. This year started out a little rough with us losing some members of our team, but these girls did a great job to make the best of it. From the very first football game, these girls made me proud with the amount of spirit they brought to the team and the games. They were a joy to work with. Even though these girls like to push my buttons and keep me on my toes, I enjoyed every bit of working with them. Even on my cranky days, these girls were able to bring joy and laughter to practices and games. These young ladies worked very hard this year, and I was very happy to be their coach. With, We had a lot of fun times this year at practices, goofing off, and with the fun chats that we had in the car rides. I know that this year will be memorable for me, and I hope that they will remember it too. I know that these young ladies will work hard and get ready for the next year to start off running right. Thank you for listening.
This is Mrs. Chapman and I am the advisor for FBLA. Even though our season was cut short, we had many great achievements. Ike Barr, who is our president, teamed up with Vice President Alex Fisher and Secretary Kylie Reeves to plan a food drive. To do this, we had a competition for the middle school level and high school level students. There was a race to see who could fill up three grocery bags first. The winners were the sixth grade for middle school and seniors for the high school. Their reward was missing a class of their choice and playing games while drinking root beer floats. The kids had a lot of fun and we were able to donate the food to the Rush County Food Bank. Martin Lopez and Ashton Butler were in charge of starting the school store for FBLA. We called a school store Cougar Cart and the students really seemed to enjoy the healthy snacks and drinks we provide. All members of the FBLA helped run the store. Some of our FBLA students went to District 5 Conference in Kingman. Ashton Butler and Lake and Vondercheck placed second for graphic design. Ethan Reaver placed second in accounting. Kylie Reeves placed third in healthcare administration. And Abby Barr and Kristen Trapp placed fifth in sports management and entertainment. Unfortunately, our state conference was canceled. Lakin and Ashton had previously submitted their graphic design online for state and placed fourth. Since they placed in the top four for their category, they qualified to go to nationals, which will be held virtually this year at the end of June. We wish them the best of luck. Almost all FBLA students had planned to go to state conference. Some students I haven't mentioned are Preston Carlson, Tom Barr, Christian Roth, and Dalton Regan. Although they missed the opportunity to participate at a conference, they were still very active with our food drive and school store. Thanks to each of you for all you did, and I look forward to next year. Hello, Kelsey Monahan to talk to you about SAD. This was the first year for me of taking over SAD, and this group of kids really helped out with all the extra work that I threw at them, from handing things out at football games to selling tickets at basketball games. These students really helped out, and I do want to say a few extra thank yous. First, thank you to Lakin, who was our president of the board this year, who helped out with many things. The amount of envelopes this poor girl had to put together for me for thank you notes. She really did her part as president of getting students organized of selling tickets and helping me get things passed out at games. Thank you again for all your hard extra work that you did this year as president. I also want to give a huge shout out to Cora Anderson for all the hard work that she did putting together the Sad Variety Show. She ran the committee to come up with all the skits and for the show and to get people to sign up to work. Even though the show did not happen, Cora, your hard work did not go unrecognized. So thank you for everything that you did. I also wanna make a huge shout out to Ike Barr. From the very first meeting, he was offering a helping hand and was an extra go-getter that this club was needing. I also want to say thank you to all of our other SAD members who helped out and were very active into the club. Thank you to Christy Butler, Jennifer Barr, and Brandy Manith for helping me get the donations and things ready for the Sad Variety Show and After Prom. It was a huge help, especially with it being my first year. I really appreciate it all. Last, I would like to give my biggest thank you to Mrs. Myers for all of the help and support that you have given me this year. The countless questions that you have answered and the many times that you have had to point me into the direction that I need to be when I was lost. Thank you for everything, and I hope I did not scare you off this year. I am excited to see what will hold, what, what next year will hold for the Sad Variety program. This year we have five scholarship winners. These winners will be winning a five, I'm sorry, a $300 scholarship towards their schooling next year. The five winners are Cora Anderson, Ashton Butler, Kristen Trapp, Lakin Vondercheck, and Maddie Wiltsey. These young ladies have been a part of SAD and have helped out throughout many years. Congratulations on the hard work, girls. Thank you for listening and have a great day. This is Mrs. Chapman, Scholars Bowl coach.
We had a great Scholars Bowl season this year, and I couldn't be more proud of my team. The effort put forth by the students was phenomenal. We attended several meets, placing at a few, and even took third place at CPL. For our CPL All-League nominees, Ike Barr made first team select, Tom Barr made second team select, and Preston Carlson made third team. Congratulations to all three. Our car trips were interesting, to say the least, but I love every minute of it and had a great time coaching my second year. We had a lot of fun, and I look forward to coaching once again next year. Preston Carlson was uh, fourth time lettering, Ashton Butler third time lettering, Hunter Mitchell was his first letter, Ike Barr was second time lettering, Kylie Reeves third time lettering, Ethan Reaver got his first letter this year, as well as Tom Barr getting his first letter this year. I would like to thank the others who participated when I was needed them. That was Sedona Shad, Dalton Regan, Amanda Sizemore, Cooper Manneth, Chloe Shank, Kendall Dalton, and Alex Jones. Thank you to all of you. Have a great summer. The Otis Bison Student Council was very busy this year with many different activities. Our council who led and organized the activities included Cora Anderson, President, Lauren Meyer, Vice President, Abby Barr, Secretary, Maddie Wiltsey, Treasurer, Kristen Trapp and Seth Hoopengardner, Senior Representatives, Junior Representatives Nathan Roth and Abby Barr, Sophomore Representatives Caden Faust and Sedona Shad, Freshman Representatives Taylor Croissant and Clayton Schneider, SAD President Lakin Vondercheck and Representative Hunter Mitchell, NHS Representative Kendall Steiner, and K's President Maddie Wiltsey, along with Representative Danica Bartnick. We also had help from 8th grade representatives Easton Juno and Ava Kenyon, 7th grade representatives Logan Meyer and Kaylee Ficken, and 6th grade representatives Lewis McVeigh and Delilah Reaver. The council hosted an all-school escape room activity to welcome students back to school in August. We split the students up randomly for students to get to know each other better. During Spirit Week, we worked together to hold Spirit Days, host a powder puff football game and Ironman volleyball game on Monday, Big Man on campus and Miss Irresistible on Wednesday, and put together the parade and ceremony on Friday. Our Stuga organization hosts Cougar Buddies, which is where high school students get paired up with an elementary school student. The kickoff of Cougar Buddies was a success with games, snacks, and dances. Throughout the year, high school students will meet with their Cougar buddies and eat lunch, read a book, or go to recess together. We also organized a trunk or treat in October, hosted a Christmas party for the junior high and high school students with games, movies, and pizza. The council also sponsored the Papa Shot at basketball games, hosted the Cans for Crush activity for the junior high and high school for Valentine's, and conducted a mini basketball clinic for our elementary school students the first part of March. With the combined help of members and Mr. Highfill, we also help promote Otis Bison's spirit by posting and challenging others to do the same on different topics with the Flipgrid app. This year was filled with fun and different activities that were led by a great council. We thank you all for a great year. safe and healthy as we continue our social distancing lifestyle with COVID-19. On this fifth day of May, I'm excited to announce that you are a recipient of a Wanna Mae Vincent scholarship in the amount of $400. Congratulations. Thank you for applying for this scholarship. It gave me the opportunity to read through uh, your essay. It also gave me the opportunity to learn a little bit more about you and your leadership and service at Otis Bison. I understand you've been the secretary of your club as well as a co-president for three years. 
Thank you for finishing out the term of Area 5 Area President. You did an outstanding job. Also attending KY Leadership Camp for two years in addition to attending numerous regional and unit conferences. And also I know that during your term as president you also hosted an outstanding uh, unit conference at Otis Bison High School. I loved reading your essay. You stated that joining KAY was truly one of the best decisions you ever made in your life. You also stated that service projects have taught you the importance of putting others before self. You said you learned that a leader needs to be enthusiastic, understanding, and willing to get their hands dirty. And you also said that you were confident that KAY has prepared you for whatever your future will bring. There are many activities I know you do at Otis Bison, but you stated some of your favorite were the TMH Christmas Party, Operation Christmas Child, the annual Easter Egg Hunt, and others as well. Mrs. Crottinger, your sponsor, had great things to say. She said, first and foremost, Maddie is an excellent student. She has a, dri a drive to succeed at whatever she chooses to do. She is engaged, motivated, talented, and w a well-balanced person. She truly represents the best ideal of a team player, what a team player is, and she places others' needs before her own. I know that you're going to attend the University of Nebraska at Kearney and pursue a career in organizational and relational communications, and I'm excited about uh, that chosen field for you. Please watch the mail this week, uh, Maddie, because you're gonna get a large envelope from the High School Activities Association. Inside is a letter, a certificate, and a response form. Please read those and let me know if you have any questions. Once again, Maddie, congratulations. I'm really excited that you're gonna be on the Leadership Camp staff this summer. Can't wait uh, for that op opportunity to get back to some normalcy in our lives. I've enjoyed the opportunity to work with you in the KAY program and hope you will look back on the time of leadership and service in your KAY pro program uh, with strong, fond memories, knowing that you made a difference uh, in the lives of other people. Once again, Maddie, congratulations. And don't forget, once a K, always a K. Good evening. The Rush County Farm Bureau Association budgets funds every year for seniors attending Rush County High Schools who are also Rush County Farm Bureau members. We are pleased to announce that this year we have selected two outstanding scholarship recipients from Otis Bison High School. Each recipient will receive a $250 check upon proof of enrollment in a post-secondary educational institution. This year's recipients of the Rush County Farm Bureau Association scholarships are Cora Anderson and Lakin Vondracek. Congratulations, ladies, and best of luck in your future endeavors. Buenas noches. Good evening. In May 2016, the Kansas State Department of Education adopted the Seal of Biliteracy to recognize graduating seniors who have become bilingual in English and one or more other world languages. The Seal of Biliteracy is a statement of exceptionally high achievement on a student's transcript, and it also recognizes the student's readiness for college, a career, and even engagement as a global citizen. Last year, only 24 of 286 school districts across Kansas awarded the seal to a total of 406 seniors. I am so very honored to announce that in March of this year, our first Otis Bison senior, Maddie Wiltsey, received this prestigious award recognizing her proficiency in both English and Spanish. Maddie began her study of Spanish as a freshman and continued to take Spanish every year of her high school career. Maddie proved her proficiency in English by scoring well on the ACT. In order to prove her proficiency in Spanish, Maddie took four nationally approved Spanish tests in reading, writing, listening comprehension, and speaking. On three of the four tests, Maddie scored advanced low, which is the highest score possible on these tests, and the proficiency required to be a certified teacher of a world language in most public schools. There are just no shortcuts to language acquisition in any language. 
It requires sustained effort over a period of five to ten plus years. Maddie is the epitome of dedication, hard work, and talent, and so it is with great honor that I award Madeline Wiltsey, the first ever Otis Bison High School and Kansas State Department of Education, Seal of Literacy in English and Spanish. Congratulations, Maddie.